All right, welcome back. Matt Davio here uh, with Aaron Barak. Aaron, thanks for coming on. Uh, you are uh, the chief marketing officer of a, a new product, a new financial product called Wall Street Scanner, and they can find it at wallstscanner.com. Um, you've got a pretty uh, storied background. You spent some time uh, moving Reuters into the digital uh, marketing space. So you've got yeah. uh, you know some great uh, background in, in working in uh, this content. Talk to us a little bit about Wall Street Scanner and kind of how the ideas came about and, uh, you know, how you use the, the Israeli intelligence, I guess, to figure out the stock market. I, I, love the, I love the angle on the story there. Sure. So uh, the company was started two years ago really with a vision of uh, tackling the increase that you see in the financial market. Um, I think, you know, financial... Consumers are just overwhelmed. The, the current outlets that are out there are just aggregating more and more data. Uh, people are overwhelmed. They're not getting the bottom line. And they're, and what we're seeing is that they just bring more market type of data. They're not sort of integrating in there the other dimensions of either the, the vibe or it's sort of the mood of the market. So we really wanted to sort of set a new course and, and sort of mix the two things. Uh, we built a platform of artificial intelligence that really integrates with the market data side of the, of the street as well as the market mood or market vibe side of the street to bring you a more comprehensive uh, view and create a really simple dashboard with simple indicators for simple people like myself. I'm, I'm not that big of an expert. I want to just simple things that I could really use. Well, you know, as a 20-year as a trader, uh, there is a lot more noise today than there ever was, and, and, and I always tell, you know, the, the at-home players, and it is a game, you know, try, try not to get too complicated and try to keep what, however you want to manage money, long-term, short-term, simple. So talk to us a little bit about all the noise that's out there and how you go about filtering because you're, you're looking at, uh, right now, it looks like about 2,000 publicly traded U.S. Uh, companies. Right. And so we, sorry, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. So you okay. know, just kind of give us how, you're, you know, how you get into those liquidity rules and, and how you avoid some of the traps that, you know, some of the small-time investors can, can sure. get. Sure. So know, we started with uh, the top 2,000 Market wise, market cap wise stocks. Uh, just we, we wanted the first sort of pool out there. It's definitely our plan and I got a lot of people asking, you know, do you also cover this stock or that stock? And we constantly get a request and actually the, the latest version of the, the iPhone app that people may experience has a button to say, you're not covering this. Can you also cover that? Right. Uh, and we'll be covering also Canadian and some other exchanges. Um, but we really, sort of distill the conversation that we find online, whether it's through Twitter, blogs, or other places where people are having a conversation about what's happening in the market, what do they see. And it's not just a matter of analyzing the text. Uh, you need to really have some smarts about it. For example, you know, you could have an article that is all about negative uh, views of the, let's say, the car industry, but has a very positive outlook for Ford. Uh, so you really need to understand the context, and there's some synonyms there, I would say they mentioned, you know, Ford CEO, they don't mention the company per se, and they're saying something very nice about it, and then you can discern that, you know, something positive about the company. So right. really there's some textual analytics for many sources, and the algorithm actually goes and acquires new sources. So let's say you're, uh, you know, you start writing about, uh, about us and mention some other source that the algorithm is not aware of. Mm -hmm. It's going to pick it up and say, well, is that an additional source I should add to my roster? So we started small, let the algorithm sort of run for two years, and it constantly is learning more and more, getting better at actually understanding human language, uh, which, by the way, we got to a level where we're almost on par or on par with human understanding. Right. And it's getting more and more sources to, to sort of get information from. So I'm just curious. It's it's a learning tool for the, an investor, and it's a learning learning uh, learned tool itself. It's always, as you said, growing. Uh, and, and and I'm just curious, you know, on the intelligence side, how how is this type of uh, 
uh, technology and data used in that world? Just give me a real high level piece, if you would, and, uh, and maybe how the intelligence community may use the same type of uh, information because, I, you know, obviously there's a lot of chatter and there's a lot of networks and data that they're tracking all the time. Right. Well, I mean, obviously this is not nowhere related to the defense industry, but right. the, the sort of the skill set obviously is there where, you know, any sort of uh, country is trying to understand the mood and, and various uh sort of ongoing efforts or things that are happening with uh, either their allies or their foes. Uh, Israeli intelligence is no different, and they use various uh, sort of algorithms and, and technologies to try and understand what's going on, you know, with uh, the countries surrounding them and, and other potential threats. So there's a lot of commonality here of understanding natural language and understanding, you know, the, the context, the mood. You know, you could have a text that is completely facetious, right, very hard to really pinpoint there. There are people who write in sort of a little bit of cryptic mode. I can yep. tell you traders are very good at that, right? Yep. Using all sort of uh, combinations of acronyms, uh, really trying to understand the language and what they're trying to say. Um, we, you know, the consumers are nowhere near the professionals and their level of understanding. We're, we're just trying to level the playing field a little bit. So I'm curious, you know, there, there was there was some news yesterday early morning that SEC was going after, uh, I don't know if you guys picked up on this or had any comment on this, but there was, SEC was going after some, uh, you know, uh, some supposed short uh, group that was out there, you know, aggressively targeting companies and taking them down. Uh, did you did did the Wall Street scanner pick that up? And you know, was there any any thoughts on that? I, I don't know. I didn't check on that. But uh, sorry. No, I, I, there was some chatter out there, and again, I didn't follow it. I wasn't really in the stocks, but it, it was um, you know they were saying some of these Chinese stocks were being improperly targeted. But on the SEC page, there was nothing about you know these same companies that was mentioned in this PR. It wasn't a PR. Right. But it was some some random newswire, and, and a lot of people really thought it was a hoax type thing. So I just was curious. Uh, we don't have to get hung up on it. Well, you see, when when you follow certain stocks, uh, the algorithm really tries to float um, unusual market conditions. So when, for example, our featured tab lists stocks that have an unusual, let's say, trading day. Um, if I take two companies, let's say I take I don't know Apple computers, right, and I don't know. Uh, Gap or, or some construction company, obviously Apple is going to have a lot more chatter on a, on a usual day than, than some construction company. Uh, when we see a spike in Apple's chatter beyond its usual levels, I could say, okay, the buzz is somewhat unusual. Then I try to discern whether that buzz is, is positive in nature or negative in nature. And we're not just looking at the absolute number, we're also looking at the shift and the, sort of the the rate that that shift or the velocity of that shift is happening. And therefore, we float to you in feature stocks that have an unusual day for the good or bad and saying these are potential investment opportunities because something is happening. Let's say somebody, you know, is talking about shorting and, and, and that could actually affect the stock tomorrow. Uh, you should pay attention oh, yeah. to sort of better indicators. Right, right. So, you know, I'm curious, have you guys, have you guys looked at in, in your algorithms, uh, are there any studies out there that you've done or otherwise, uh, that how social media and, and social media again is evolving, you know, it used to be in the 90s, you know, chat boards, uh, you know, uh, Silicon Investor, all these, you know, Yahoo finance boards, how they may affect stocks and their pricing? Is that part of your algorithms? Um. I would say that, by and large, and this is my, my sort of personal view, um, when you look at a stock, uh, the, the majority of the money in the market is obviously, you know, with the, with the funds, with the pension funds and, you know, various uh, big money players. But they usually get in and out of investments over, but not over a day, right? They have an execution strategy that sort of gets in and gets out. Right. And sort of they're the sort of the big weight, right, of, of what is happening with the stock over time. And then there's sort of the, the little weight, right, that's sort of the, the noise, some people call it, but the, the, how the stock sort of jumps up and down during the day right. or, or during every couple of days. That is sort of the, let's say, the 20% of the money in the market that is held by the smaller players, you know, you and me, or, or some other, you know, smaller players. 
those are more susceptible to the, the sort of the quick steps. Right. And so we're not really trying to replace the, the long-term investors and, and analysts of saying, you know, within the next two years, the market is going to move that way. But we are trying to give you a sense of what's going to happen in the very short term, which is great probably for swing traders as well as, I think, for long-term investors who just rather get in at the right time. Right, right. So it, 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 it can be a helpful timing tool for, as you said, the short term to even medium, uh, medium term investors. Yeah. You know, I'm curious, you mentioned the pension funds and hedge funds. Do you think they are being more affected by, uh, you know, the social media, and, and, you know, that's out there? You know, maybe, maybe the game is shifting a little bit. The smaller guy, you know, as you said, may only contain 20% of the actual volume, but because, uh, you know, the smaller investor has less faith, maybe in, in the, in the Wall Street, world uh, that they're trading more and do you think with that in mind? I think, I think they are. I, I think you know many of them are not just looking at a sort of a technical analysis of you know how the company performs the various parameters. They're also trying to discern sort of the, the, the effects of other things under sort of under the hood and the conversation that is happening around let's say you know uh, tension and management or this executive you know coming in or leaving really leads them to uh, thinking of how well the company is going to be able to execute and perform, you know, in the foreseeable future. So, so having a sort of a finger on the conversation gives you a lot more sort of another dimension of both confidence and input to your decision making. So give me, give me a, a brief overview of how Wall Street Scanner uh, does go about scanning for uh, information overall. Sure. So the algorithm obviously goes out and uh, sort of uh, reads the various blogs and sources that, that it acquired. And we see a lot of repetition, by the way, and that, that's natural in news and, you know, any sort of rumor. So it sort of works its way down to identifying keywords, names, people uh, of, an, of that nature and sort of cuts down the repetition and, and associates various things with specific stocks. Um, but then it really what it does, it creates a sort of a fingerprint for how the stock is behaving or the market conditions for that stock in, let's say, the given day of today, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's you know, through the price, short, you know, short ratio could call, uh, market, you know, market buzz, market mood, uh, and uh, what are Twitter saying, et cetera, et cetera. It creates sort of a fingerprint for that stock. And then what's really interesting is we can do a statistical correlation back to what's happening. This is very much like, I don't know if you followed the, you know, the recent basketball, you know, final. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are a lot of stats in sports that tell you, you know, when the Heat or, or when the Mavericks are playing, you know, the home field with this kind of, you know, team, you know, in most cases or 86% of the cases, they win, right? right. We do the same thing for stocks. We, we take that fingerprint. We go back the last two years and we see... Are there days with a similar fingerprint? And if they are, what did the stock do in the following day? And right. we give you that sort of analysis saying, listen, you know, in 86% of cases with today's conditions, the stock went up or S&P went up, you know, the next day. Uh, right. Is it guaranteed? Like whether, you know, nothing is guaranteed, but this is the best way we as, you know, human race know how to predict the future. Right. So when, when you, you know, uh, again, when your when your artificial intelligence is, is out there crawling, yeah. What would you say? And, and it's adding sources uh, and learning day by day. How many of the comments, you know, for a liquid stock like again, we'll just use Apple. How many, you know, are, are you pretty confident that uh, the product is scanning ninety nine point nine percent? Is there a is there a, a rate of, of you know comments? Um. That are I don't out think there. I have, you know, the, the sort of the number, uh, because it's like you don't know what you don't know. Uh, but I can tell you that it's definitely helpful having a lot of sources because of the standard deviation of your error. You know, you have more sample data, it's, it's yep. better. Uh, in January, just to, just to give you an example, in January this year, I think we were around reading about 5 million pages every day. Now we're over 7 million. And this is by no you know, manual effort on our part. The algorithm just keeps on finding new places. And it's like more and more blogs are created every day and people you know, start 
for writing more and more. So it's it's like an ever ever growing you know, challenge. Yeah, us no, consumers, not, but but a benefit for us as as a Wall Street scammer. I'm curious, you know, as you project out, I mean, where do you see those numbers? Just you know, by again, I'm sure you're doing math on that, and and, and where do you see that? Number being, uh, you know, a year out from now, it's got to be 20 million. I don't know. I mean, what's what's the number look like? Even if it is, I I, I don't think we're worried. We have uh, you know well enough capacity to to handle you know even 10 times that if if needed. We can always you know grow out our uh, our data center. I think what's interesting is for us the next step. I mean, we obviously have been able to create here some unique content that we don't think we see anywhere else. The next step is really to establish sort of the world's first uh, sort of a community of analysts, not, you know, not necessarily professionals, but, but people sort of helping each other on a way to what our vision is, is, is creating crowdsourced market intelligence. Yeah. Because that's, we, we think, you know, us consumers need to pull together and help each other, and, and this is sort of the wisdom of the crowd. And you're looking, you know, again, as a as a person who gets and, you know, always tries to use more statistics in their analysis, I think it's powerful. The, as you said, the greater uh, base of knowledge that you utilize, the more powerful, I think, uh, statistics always can be. Um, you know, my next question, I guess, is who, you know, who is, you know, you've got uh, iPhone app, uh, iPad app. You'll be coming with Droid and BlackBerry. Who is your target market? Who are you trying to, uh, you know, is it institutions? Is it institutions and retail? Uh, you know, how do you see the, the marketplace rolling out for you guys? We're absolutely, first and foremost, targeting retail consumers. Uh, that's, by the way, the reason that we made a decision to go first with, uh, with the iPhone. Uh, next month, we're going to have the, the Android, as you mentioned, uh, and actually also a website that would enable other devices maybe to browse and soon after to have the BlackBerry. Um, absolutely, the, the sort of the retail consumers, uh, there is a mezzanine industry that we can definitely see for a B2B play where some of the data gets syndicated or maybe some uh, you know, applications can be built on top of this analysis and analytics. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's sort of uh, further down the road, uh, maybe in, in a, sort of in a mezzanine to our business plan. Okay. And, um, you know, business model, what, you know, can you give us some uh, insight into, you know, kind of what you, you project and what you see early on? Sure. Uh, so the three really um, sort of revenue sources that we're seeing down the road is obviously a subscription to some of the more premium content. Right now, the iPhone app is free, and, uh, you know, people who are using that are probably going to be grandfathered in uh, for a long time for, for a certain data set. Uh, there are some uh, additional packages and data sets uh, that uh, just economically we will need to sort of uh, sell. If, if, let's say, other exchanges, we may start introducing some fees for, for those data sets, um, as well as some of, let's say, the, the investment recommendation is probably going to be available for a certain period of time on, on a trial basis, and then we're going to sell that as a, as a premium. Just a couple of dollars, you know, it's not... You know, a month. It's not going to be something that uh, that is out of reach for for the average consumer. Um, and then, and then beyond that, uh, there is obviously the route of advertising. But also, we've been we're constantly getting approached by various um, sort of financial outlets of uh, wanting to syndicate some of our content to their audience, uh, and, and we're going to explore that too. Have you uh, have you considered uh, or have you done any portfolio back testing and, and possibly uh, creating a portfolio, becoming a portfolio manager yourself? Uh, you know, maybe a a uh, social, you know, a Wall Street scanner hedge fund, anything like that. Well, th- there is definitely interest, and I can tell you that some uh, portfolio managers or actually hedge fund managers are testing out our app right now. And uh, so far, with very positive response, and, and they like what they see, uh, I wouldn't preclude uh, that kind of option. But right now, our, our business is really focused on delivering fantastic, uh, you know, market intelligence. Uh, yeah, again, I don't want any specifics, but I'm just curious: when these hedge funds are testing that out, are they putting real money at, at risk, or are they saying, "Hey, let's look at these 20 stocks, uh, you know, across uh, different uh, uh, diversifications"? And let's run an active portfolio. Is that something that they're looking at, Aaron? Uh, to, to each his own, as we say. Uh, 
you can obviously run a sort of a virtual game and see what you know what uh, what happens. Yep. Uh, I, I'm not sure if some of them actually put in a, you know a certain funds and then see if that uh, actually converts. Uh, I think it's the same. It's down at the bottom line. It's the same process. You just want, they wanted to get the sort of the feel for how real is this. And I think we're seeing people come back and saying, "Oh my God, this is real! I can actually make money with this." Mm -hmm. um, so you've been up and live uh, with the product for the marketplace for uh, how long now? Since middle of May. Middle of May. So we're just over a month. Uh, you got any metrics for us? How many users do you have uh, in the system right now? Um, we have over sixty thousand users that have downloaded the app uh, in, the, in sort of the first month, and uh, we hope to sort of keep up that rate and actually accelerate it as we're launching for the other platforms as well. Um, and, and obviously, you know, getting our name out there, uh, people actually discover us not just uh, by word of mouth, but uh, help well via, via some uh, media appearances. Yeah, absolutely. So, as far as uh, technical requirements, if I'm if I have an iPad, if I have an iPhone, obviously I download an app. What if I have a PC here and, and I don't have my iPad with me? Can I download it on my PC today? Uh, not today, but next month you'll have the the website, which uh, will make it available for PCs as well. Are you consider? You know, I hear a lot of developers talk about, you know, like you said, Droid, BlackBerry, iPhone. That's great. They all have apps, and the app stores. The buzz right now, but you know, with everything kind of going mobile on the browser side, are you, you know, and are, are you thinking about just kind of an open API, you know, web, you know, so you don't yeah. have to develop for every new phone and every new platform that comes out? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we're trying not to sort of marginalize our business plan by just you know becoming the pipe, right? Right. Uh, but the, the really the content here is is getting interesting and then having people. Uh, sort of uh, license that, uh, definitely an option uh, that we have contemplated and, and probably will put into action down the road. And, 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 and we've kind of touched on this a little bit. People keep coming to you for added, add more stocks, add the Toronto Exchange, yeah. the Vancouver Exchange, DAX, FTSE. How about other asset classes, you know, CDS, currencies, soft uh, commodities, hard commodities? You know, gold, so, you know, real commodities. Yeah. Later this year, uh, sort of the, the, the plan, although I can't sort of guarantee any, any sort of dates, uh, there are two areas that uh, are probably next on our roadmap. One is foreign exchange, and the other one is going into some ETFs. Um, and, and those are the most immediate that we see in terms of, uh, of sort of a, uh, correlation between our goals, our value, and what people are asking uh, to for us uh, as next steps. Well, Aaron, it's a fascinating product, and I, I recommend everybody uh, go to your site, wallstreetscanner.com, and um, check it out. And uh, we'll wish you continued success. Thank you very much, and uh, I, I look forward to uh, hearing you and your personal experience, and so you'll have us back and saying this is fantastic. Absolutely, I know I'm, 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 I'm downloaded and I'm playing with it, so I'm I'm very curious. You know, the, anything anywhere you can get an edge for, uh, you know, and like you said, I may use it completely differently than the way other people will use it. So, yeah. I apologize for the uh, cut in here. I'm not sure where this is coming from, so I'm going to cut it off here, Aaron, and we'll talk uh, soon after I've tried it out some more. Sounds good.